this is what believers do. We serve, we give, we love, we hold on to, we worship, right? These are the things that we do. Or is everybody standing in agreement with what I'm saying so far? Yeah. Good, all right. So these were powerful words from God meant to inspire us to put feet to our faith. That's what God's looking for, that we might just go out there and walk it out to get out there and make a difference. So let's look at one of the um, core purpose statements that we had talked about last week and found on the website. Journey Church seeks to maintain a strong missional focus both locally and globally. Locally, our heart is to impact Clay County and the surrounding areas for Christ by reaching out to the hurting and forgotten. Realizing that we're part of a global society, we seek to extend the reach of the church through national and international missions, right? So those are a lot of words, big words that are there, but they really talk about having a heart for missions, being others focused, being outside of the walls of this church. People rarely just come and show up because you open the doors. Build it and they will come. It doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't happen that way. We need to get out there, outside the walls of the church, touching people, meeting them right where they're at, in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods, at big events, anywhere where people are gathered. We as believers need to presence ourselves there, but we need to be spirit-led and spirit-motivated in what we're doing as well. Acts 1.8 tells us, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. If you were here Wednesday night, we talked about territorial spirits as part of what the conversation was about. That in each area, in each city, there's powers and principalities and heavenly places set to see that area not evangelized. They don't want to see people come to Christ. They want to steal their lives away. They want to make sure that people don't come to know Christ. And that means that when we start out, we need to be in prayer. If we're going to go out there and try to touch the areas around us, we need to ask for an open heaven, an open door to be over our city, that those spiritual forces might be back that when we get out there, we can touch them and they have ears to hear and eyes to see what's really going on. So that's where it needs to start. And it says that we start in Jerusalem and then Judea and then Samaria. So what is our Jerusalem here? What do you figure? Right here, Orange Park, the surrounding areas. This is where God's planted us. Over time, I believe he will continue to expand our reach. There's already people who come from Jacksonville and from St. Augustine all the way here to Journey Church to be a part of what God is doing here. But we start in our own backyard. We be faithful with the area that God has given us. And as we're faithful, he will continue to expand it. He'll expand our influence. He'll expand our reach. He'll expand our opportunities to reach out to other people. So when we look at Journey Church, we really seek to be a church that's on a mission. A church that's a, a base station for sending people out. Um, we, we often think of missionaries as people who go to the other ends of the world to go out there and serve and touch people in a foreign country or foreign land. But let me tell you something. Guess what? God planted you here. You are missionaries to this culture. You know this culture better than anybody else. You live here every day. If we could change our mindsets to think about ourselves as missionaries... If we learn the culture that he's planted us in, if we reach the people in our businesses, if we reach the people in our neighborhoods and we start to look at life through those lenses, I'm not saying every person's a target. Oh, we got to get her saying, her saying, you know, it's not some uh, network marketing kind of a thing where you're trying to just target everybody, but you're being aware of what's going on around you, that you're asking God, today, would you put divine connections in my path? Would you put people in front of me and give me the courage to actually talk to them and share my faith with them? Would you see me, Lord, as a missionary? Would you give me a heart to see the people in my neighborhoods as people who love you dearly or don't love you and need to love you? Would you give me a heart to see them come to know you, that they might become fully devoted followers? Would you make it hard for people to go to hell in my city? Right? Would you make it hard for people to go to hell in my city? Would you knit churches together that we might work together, that they might know us by our unity and by our love for one another? We need to make it hard for people to go to hell in our cities. And there's plenty of opportunities in our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our social and civic activities, our hobbies. We are representatives here on earth. He calls us to be a royal priesthood. We get to pick on Wojo and his family today. And uh, Chris and them, they have a beautiful thing going on. They actually came to us not long ago and said, we'd like to help you know, start a journey softball team, and we want to do it out there in the secular league. And, and a lot of people are going out there. We've had the joy of going out there a couple Friday nights, and 
what does a softball team have to do with Christianity? What does softball have to do anything with, with sharing your faith? Well, guess what? They go out there and they're not cussing. They're not drinking beer. They're hanging out there and they're playing a game. And this week they won again in Jesus' name. And they, were, they were out there winning. And then at the end of the at the end of the time, they actually call the other team over to pray. And each and every time, not one time have they been denied so far. I'm praying that that trend continues. Where one of the girls on the other team after the after the thing, she actually comes up to us. And she's looking, where's the coach? Where's the coach? And she said, man, would you guys come back tomorrow? Because you don't know what they're doing out here tomorrow. They're cussing up the storm. We need more of a <laughs> influence out here. We need people that are going to make a difference. So they used a hobby, something that they enjoy doing, and said, let's make Christ first, even in our hobby, that we can go out there and have a good time. So whatever your hobby is, as long as it's not sinful, if you have a sinful hobby, you've got to change it. If you have a hobby, turn it around and put Christ first in that. If you're a fisherman, guess what? He'll put other people who are fishermen, but he'll make you a fisher of men in the midst of that context. So God wants you to think of yourself more like a missionary, that we would be out there touching people wherever we find ourselves. So he formed you and created you as a masterpiece. He gave you the interests that you have, the things that you're excited about for a reason. Is all this making sense to you today? Yeah. All right. Well, I believe it's imperative that we have, um, you know, very strong local missions. It's also important in today's day and age that we have a global perspective as well, right? We need to think about things globally and nationally. We can't give up that thing. But I think there are multiple circles of service also. I think every believer, every priest or priestess, should serve within the walls of the church and outside the walls of the church. Um, I know that the Bible tells us that we are the temple of the living God. This is just a physical building where we gather, right? God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, lives in each of you. You are the temple of the living God. The Holy Spirit is alive in you, transforming you. But in the, in the sense that we gather together corporately, this building that at one time was a bar, at one time was a dance club, has now been transformed into a church, right? It's a church. It's a place where people gather. And when they gather, there's work to be done to make sure that this room is set up. You know, somebody went out to Walmart and bought all that food that we enjoyed eating today. Somebody came out here and set up all these chairs. Somebody attempted to set up the computer, but Eric forgot to bring the little piece, you know, so that, that made the little thing project on there. Uh, you know, somebody uh, made, you know, went out last night. You know, our family went out last night and said, it's hotter than anticipated. They went out and got fans to try to make it a more enjoyable environment for you. But if a couple of people are trying to do all the work, guess what happens? They get burned out, man. And it's happened in many of the churches where, you know, 20% of the people are doing all the work. And then when it comes time, guess what? Usually they end up getting disenchanted and disillusioned with the church. And then before long, they're out of there and they go to the next church. And they say, I'm going to be a spectator for as long until the Lord comes back. I'm not going to serve again because I remember what happened last time. But that's not what we want here. Guess what? If all of you serve, you, you could feel the entire weekend services if you serve once a month with just the people who are right here in this room. You could take care of everything that needs to be done. If you were willing to set aside one weekend of your month to say, serve wherever I need me, if it's guest services, if it's in children's church, if it's singing on stage, using whatever gifts that God has given you, if you were willing to do that, you know, nobody would get burned out, right? So one of the things when we talk about church membership is that um, we want everybody who's a member to serve. And frankly, I had a conversation with somebody after service. You can sign your name on the dotted line on the fourth week. You could say, I'm a member of Journey Church, but if you don't serve, if you don't give, if you don't you know, outreach, guess what? You're not a member. The members are the people who are participating in the household. So that's really what distinguishes people. Are you really ready to get dirty? Are you ready to step out in faith? Are you ready to serve both inside and outside the walls of the church? Some of you, God's called to be an every week servant. He wants you to, some of you are an everyday servant. He's called you to serve every single day. You know, um, some of you are an every week servant. He wants you in a different role in there because when we talk about spiritual maturity, if you're mature, it, 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 you shouldn't be coming to a church and saying, oh, I'm just not getting fed here. i got to go to some other church. How many of you have ever heard that being said? Yeah. Oh, I'm not getting fed. If you're mature, you should be feeding yourself and you should help feed others when it comes to a weekend service, right? 
you should be there and helping facilitate it so that the new believers can start to get the milk of the word or what have you and even into the meat of the word. But if you're not serving, if you're not giving chance, you know that you're a believer. You might think you are, but you're not. At that point, you should be sowing into the lives of other people. Is all this making sense to you? Yeah. I know I'm being a little strong. I'm trying to deter you from being members. <laughs> Do you get it? What I'm saying is if we really want this thing that we need to be sold out to live for our God and King, this is serious business to, to hit, I believe. Amen? Amen? Amen. And then when we do serve, do you think it's important that we serve with excellence? Exactly. You know, if the class, if you're in a kid's church class and you show up at 929 when people were depending on you to be there at 901, is that good? No. No, because everybody else is scrambling. They're wondering if you're going to show up. Oh, no, how are we going to fill in? Or if you send a text message at 9 o'clock at night saying, you know, I can't be at church the next day, you know, when you're on schedule to serve and you've known it for six weeks. These are things believers do. Yes. I understand all the time people get sick. Things like that do happen. They're legitimate things. But if we're serious about serving our God and King, it's important. Like, make that service a priority in your life because... People are depending. There's 650, 700 people that come here on a weekend. There might be 30 kids in that class if you're serving in a kids class. Or you might be welcoming 600 people through the front door. If you go at the last minute, it's hard for everybody else to make up on those kinds of things. So when you say that you're going to step up and serve, man, be ready for that commitment. And for most people, if we're honest, if we start to look at it, and here, here's my frustration. I shared it a little bit on Wednesday night with the state of Christianity in general. On many teams, we have like a six-week rotation where people serve once every six weeks for about an hour, an hour and a half. If you add that up over the course of the year, that's like 10 hours of your life that you've served God in the course of an entire year. You hear what I'm saying? You try to move it up and say, hey, we're adding another service. We want to do this. Would you serve God once a month? For an hour and a half. Oh my God, I can't believe you're asking me to serve once a month. you got to be kidding me. What does that say about our faith? We can't give God 12 hours a month. 